Freedom. People talk about freedom every day. Freedom of press. Freedom of speech. Freedom of expression. But have you ever thought of how much of a freedom that you have on your daily life? And most of us take freedom for granted, right? But how would you feel when you ended up in a situation that your basic rights and freedom are suddenly not there anymore? This happened to me back in the year 2004. I was quite unexpectedly thrown into prison. Today, I'm going to share my story. I'm a news publisher, and I've been in this industry for nearly two decades now. I love publishing. I love the smell of inks, smell of the paper. And I love the noise of the running printing presses. A lot of people think I'm crazy, but for me, it's my passion. I co-founded Myanmar Times newspaper back in year 2000. And actually, my background still is uh, printing. I didn't understand about publishing or anything whatsoever. Let me give you a bit of uh, context. Before year 2000, there was an, a real private-owned newspaper. Most of the newspapers are state-owned. And basically, we are trying to, uh, we are basically testing the ground. There were a lot of issues, though. Everything has to run by the censorship board. If they don't like one word, they would reject the whole story. But it was a fun challenge for us. We became number one within two years' time. It's simply because there wasn't enough uh, competitions at that time. We were flying so high until November 2004 when unexpected problems struck me from an unexpected angle and got me into big trouble. There was a time military government purged military intelligence and I happened to be get caught in the middle because of my father. My father used to be the Air Force Brigadier General from the intelligence unit who was overseeing the international affairs. So soon after his arrest, I was taken into custody. And nine months later, I was sentenced to 14 years imprisonment for censorship offense. Seven years for English version and seven years for Myanmar version. <laughs> My very first day in prison was nothing else but wow. The biggest wow of my life and took me a couple of days to, to swallow it. I neither have thought of ended up in a place like that nor experienced the prison before. All I knew was my normal routines are gone and I felt so empty. But the truth is, when I was taken away, for everyone, only me, Sunny is gone. But for me, everybody is gone in my life. Nothing left, just like that. I have to be very strong physically, mentally, and all I know is I'm being forced to make the biggest adjustment of my life by stranded somewhere that I felt that I didn't belong. 
they put me straight into the solitary confinement. It's a, it's a small cell, 60 square feet, 6 feet by 10 feet. And I got to stay out of the cell 15 minutes twice a day. That includes shower, laundry, and exercise. And I'm being locked up the rest of the 23 hours and 30 minutes. And there was a door with the iron bars that completely blocking my freedom, and I totally hate it. But the option was whether I just hate it or just make use of it. So pretty soon, that door became my gym equipment for my exercising. I then noticed that the world that I'm staying in it's very square. Everywhere I look at are squares. The cell, the door, the walls, all are, are squares. All right, there are some rectangles, just, you know, but indulge me, right? <laughs> I really had to push myself to the limit in order to cope with this major adjustment. And I wasn't allowed to talk to anyone, but I really needed the companies. So I started talking to the little insects in my, in my cell, and I named them individually, and they all become my friends. For instance, there are two little spiders, John and Mary. They fell in love, they got married, bang, plenty of babies. Good for me, I have more friends. <laughs> I've been to five different prisons. Yes, I call myself prison tourist. <laughs> Each prison has a different DNA. That means every time I get transferred, I have to make a whole new adjustment all over again. Different prison, different game. After sentencing, I got transferred to La Chou Prison. And La Chou is actually the best among five. Good people, good management, good weather, and most importantly, good meals. And suddenly, my life is much better compared to nine months ago. And I really wanted to keep myself positive and keep myself occupied, and I want to keep myself gain in terms of gaining a knowledge or gaining a merit or both, if I'm lucky, every day. Two and a half years later, I was out of the solitary confinement. It's a huge improvement, and I became a teacher, a photographer, and a handyman. You know, in prison, trust is equal to freedom. Once they trust you, you can get away with so many things. I not only teach English to the prisoners, I also teach English to the prison guards and the management and the officers. And I also volunteer to help very sick people in the hospital and old age people, mainly on their medical requirements. And there are little kids, though, in there, 89 of them to be exact. And most of them, they have never seen the outside world before. It's simply, they were born there, or just too young to remember when their mothers were arrested. And they love candies and, and, and the snacks and so forth. And I try to feed them whenever I have chance. And I also convince other fellow inmates 
to help them, support them, any amount of money or anything they can to support to these little kids. Well, I needed a lot more money in order to keep doing what I'm doing. So you know what I did? I financed the smugglers who smuggle in illegal properties into the prison, such as alcohol, cigarettes, DVDs, and so forth. For me, prison is like a square supermarket. Seriously. As long as you're willing to pay two, three times more than the market price, you can get anything there. Just so easy. And I always feel good whenever I think about it. And there is no such great feelings like breaking all the rules in prison in order to support the others. On the other hand, I do regular exercise, lots of readings, meditation, playing chess, playing Scrabble. And before I go to sleep every night, I think of the numbers, ID numbers, car registration numbers, birthdays, office addresses, home addresses, so that my brain won't be dusty, rusty, you know, the minute I get out of prison. Eight and a half years later, I was released in an amnesty. For everyone, he is back. For me, everybody is back in my life again. It's always good to have everybody back in your life, but trust me, it can be very overwhelming sometimes. Because everywhere I go, people ask me, man, how was it like in there? Do you mind if I ask you for this? Are you okay, physically, mentally? How did you cope with it? Any plans? What are you gonna do? You know, that sort of questions that I get everywhere I go. Same old questions, same old answers. And I really wish that this TED talk should have been four years ago so that I didn't have to repeat all my answers. I just sent them this TED link, right? <laughs> my brain was like a, a brand new sponge that you buy from a supermarket. It's so ready to absorb everything, as much as you can, as much as I can, all good and bad. Meanwhile, I was restoring my network, meeting different people, and catching up on the things that I've missed. Meetings after meetings, parties after parties, trips after trips. Pretty soon, I realized how difficult it is to be back again. Because simply, I was so used to the survival in prison. And I got back to news publishing straight away. Crazy, right? And turning my long-lasting dreams into reality, it's my favorite part looking for the right partner, building the team, and seeding the new publication. It's a lot of work. And I need great luck on top of that. And giving everything that I have and keep on fighting, it's where I am at now. And I'm always proud to be a publisher because I'm selling the news, I'm selling the truth, and I'm selling the knowledge. And a country like Myanmar needs a lot of good publications, publications with very good 
unbiased, ethical journalism reporting. And I believe that a good publication bridges between the government and the people. I might have started publishing by chance, but I'm staying in this by choice now. 13 years ago, I was thrown into jail without a fair trial. I was so used to that the richest system and the square style of prison life. But one thing I have noticed though, today, I woke up in the square bed, looking at the square ceiling and going into the square toilet and then going into my square car, then to my square office, then looking at the square monitor and typing away on the square keyboard. I'm still living in the square life. But this time, the difference is it's going to be fair and square. Thank you.